Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. The embattled ex constable for Bear County Precinct 2 and current candidate for Bear County Sheriff indicted on three felony charges today. Michelle Barrientes Vela is charged with aggravated perjury, tampering with evidence and official oppression. She turned herself in today at the Bear County Courthouse and was then placed in handcuffs before going before a judge. A former member of Vela's administration, Mark Garcia, also indicted on a felony count of aggravated perjury and three counts of official oppression. Vela has been under investigation since May. The defender's Dylan Collier has been covering her case extensively. Today, Barrientos Vela told Dylan he owes an apology. The yellow journalism that has been trade out here against me is again with this individual standing right here today. He has alleged lots of allegations Even against me. Even after your me. indictment, you're still going to throw yes, that out there? Yes, I am. Wow. Yes. Okay. And so if anybody should be apologizing to the community, it's Mr. Dillian Collar, it is you. Despite her legal troubles, Barrientos Vela says she will stay in the race for Bear County Sheriff. Her next court appearance is set for February 26th. That is eight days after early voting begins. And just a reminder, Case at News at 9 is helping you keep up with all of the big 2020 elections. Our Vote 2020 newsletter launched this week. We'll have a new edition every Tuesday this year. You can still sign up. Go to ksat.com slash newsletters. A proposed project that would transform old warehouses into commercial buildings and apartments is causing some concerns. People living in the Lavaca neighborhood south of downtown worry there will be too much traffic and not enough parking. Tiffany Huertas with the details of this project and what neighbors are now proposing. In the 10 years we've been here, it's just been sitting there and, and kind of smelling funny. Leo Lee is referring to these buildings on the corner of Jacob Street and St. Mary Street. She has been living in the Lavaca neighborhood for about 10 years and welcomes new development, but wants something that will complement the community. I think smaller apartments are good. I think, you know, with the high cost of living downtown, I think it makes a lot of sense to have the smaller apartments which they are proposing. Lee is concerned about the amount of apartment units the developer wants to bring here. Jacobs is a very narrow street. There's a reason you can't park in that street at all because otherwise EMS vehicles cannot pass through. The Lavaca Neighborhood Association president says other residents are worried too. There's going to be a lot more people in a very small space that's not made for it as well as a lot more traffic in a very small space that's not made for it. The developer wants to convert these buildings into commercial and apartment units. Patrick Christensen, who represents the developer, says they chose this location due to its proximity to downtown. He says these warehouses are falling apart. City officials tell us the developer originally planned for 39 units and a hotel, but recently dropped the hotel request. Residents hope they can come to a middle ground. Commercial use is fine, depending on what the commercial use is. Residential is fine as well. Apartments are fine. The question is how many apartments and how the space is going to be utilized. The city says the developer will present its plans to city council next month in order to give the developer time to meet with the neighborhood. Myra. All right, thanks, Tiffany. Two Northeast ISD elementary schools are reporting some high flu numbers. Now, both campuses use disinfectant misting machines to deal with this. The district says that 60 flu cases were confirmed at Roan Forest Elementary School. 34 cases confirmed at Encino Park Elementary. Neither school has canceled classes, but the disinfectant machines are being used in an effort to sanitize all surfaces there. Metro Health says it is not too late to get a flu shot. So far this season, three children have died from the virus in Bear County. A 14 year old recovering from a stabbing at a playground. Three U.S. firefighters die in Australia and the doomsday clock moves ahead 20 seconds. Here's tonight's nine at nine here at home. A 14 year old boy is recovering from severe stab wounds after a fight between several students yesterday. The boy was stabbed during a fight at the shirts playscape. The teen's mom says he was stabbed in the leg, shoulder and stomach. He got stitches. He had emergency surgery. They had to uh, go in and uh, sew his Small intestine, uh, I guess back together. Shirts police have found the juvenile. They say stabbed the boy and say aggravated assault charges have been filed. The Massachusetts woman who encouraged her boyfriend to kill himself through text messages has been released from prison. 
Michelle Carter served 11 months of her 15-month sentence. She was sent home early due to good behavior. Carter was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in 2017 when she was 17 years old. A former San Antonio ISD and Hondo ISD teacher arrested on charges of sex assault of a child and improper relationship with a student. An underage girl says she had a sexual relationship with Jose Eduardo Hernandez for eight months while he taught at Linear High School. At the end of the 2019 school year, Hernandez left SAISD. He started at Hondo ISD in August, but is no longer employed there. In New Jersey, two teens die after falling through frozen ponds in separate incidents. Yesterday, a 15-year-old fell through a frozen pond while skating with friends. He died at a hospital. A little while later, three teenagers fell through the ice at another pond. A 13-year-old died in that incident. More sad news out of Australia. These wildfires have been raging for weeks, but now they've claimed the lives of Americans in Australia to help. Three US firefighters on board a C-130 air tanker have been killed as their plane went down in what's been described as a fireball. Longtime PBS NewsHour anchor Jim Lehrer has died at the age of 85. PBS said in a statement that he died peacefully in his sleep at home. Lara founded the NewsHour television program in 1975 and anchored it for 36 years. He also moderated 12 presidential debates. PBS says that's more than any other person in U.S. history. The doomsday clock has moved ahead 20 seconds and now reads 100 seconds to midnight. The clock is a symbolic countdown to global disaster controlled by scientists who evaluate several key factors. Those scientists cite existential danger from nuclear war and climate change as reasons for adjusting the clock. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you can now get free grocery delivery service for orders of at least $35. Previously, the Amazon Fresh service was $14.99 a month. The world's worst cat apparently lives in North Carolina and an animal shelter is working to find her a forever home. The shelter posted a picture of the cat named Perdita with the label World's Worst Cat. Perdita is described as liking jump scares and lurking. She also doesn't like kittens, dogs, or children. To read more about these nine stories, head to ksat.com. Adam Kasky joining us tonight to talk about a big change we saw today. Welcome change, sunshine. Sunshine and Good sun that helped green things up after yesterday's rainfall. Yes. You know, several weeks ago, you'd be driving around, you notice on the, along the highways and the medians, it was all brown and <laughs> not very aesthetically pleasing. We but finally now, got some. We got some rain, and the aquifers, rain. aquifers up over half a foot as a result of it, so that's good too. All right, but let's talk about what's going to happen going forward here. Our weather headlines, a cool start to the day tomorrow. So the cowboy breakfast, that's right, tomorrow morning. About 40 degrees. Definitely want a jacket if you're headed out to that. Otherwise, sunny and comfortable the rest of the day. And our next chance of rain comes this weekend. Look how warm it got today. Whew, quite a contrast to yesterday. Yesterday we topped out at 59. Today it was 73. You can get down to Catula, it was 78, so right near 80 degrees southwest of town earlier today. Right now, we're at 56 here in San Antonio and in the 40s already in parts of the hill country. Clear sky, calm wind, dry air, so that temperature falling off pretty quickly and efficiently. Good radiational cooling. Head northward, we get into the 30s as you get into the panhandle, but that doesn't even change much as you head farther north from there. And the active weather we had yesterday, that's part of this wound up system that you see swirling right here. This is the main upper level disturbance out ahead of it. A lot of moisture, a lot of energy. That's what brought us our rain yesterday. We were on the tail end of that system and now we're on the back side of it, so that's going to give us another day of sunshine. Friday, a sunny day, a beautiful day, comfortable as well. And probably upper 60s, near 70 by the afternoon. Then we look at Friday evening, and this little ripple in the upper level flow is going to develop over the Baja Peninsula. That little ripple is our next upper level disturbance. That's the next, basically, piece of energy that's going to head our way and give us a little chance of rain as we get into the first part of the weekend. So notice as we get into Saturday, the clouds start to fill back in again, 10, 11 a.m., mostly cloudy conditions. We get into the afternoon, especially evening, and we'll probably have a few little spotty showers developing. Most of the activity will be close to the Gulf Coastline, but even around the I-35 corridor, 
I do think we'll have some spotty little showers popping up. Widely separated action, nothing necessarily persistent and long lasting, but enough to get you damp briefly if you're out Saturday evening and Saturday night. So tomorrow, 40 in the morning, by noon will be 62, 4 p.m. up to 68, a light and variable wind. So just a gentle, minimal breeze out there tomorrow. And there's that rain chance late Saturday, even into Saturday night, but Sunday's looking fantastic. Sunny and about 71 degrees and really no really good chance of rain behind Saturday or you know, beyond Saturday. Maybe a few little chances here and there, but temperatures remaining comfortable. That's yeah, the key. Can't argue there. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adam. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. <laughs>home tonight the chiefs of every bear county emergency services district are asking the county to pass on radios sold by a company linked to a recent scandal san antonio based daily and wells is linked to a bribery investigation involving san angelo's former police chief who was charged last week but despite the timing of their request one of the chiefs tells ksat that this is about safety not that recent news ESD 7 Chief Kevin Clarkson says the letter had been in the works for months. In that letter, all 11 emergency services districts are trying to get the county commissioner's court to change plans for new fire radios. And we're saying we would prefer the county purchase those Motorola's for the fire departments in the county. The ruggedness of those radios is just undeniable. A county spokeswoman says they have forwarded the letter to the appropriate county personnel for review. To Washington now, where the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump is in its third day. Democratic managers continue to present their case. Tomorrow is the last of three days they have to do so. After that, President Trump's legal team will have 24 hours over three days for its opening arguments. That will likely happen on Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. Senators will then get the opportunity to ask questions. And turning to tonight's top stories, Austin City Council has voted to end arrests and fines for possession of small amounts of marijuana. This comes after the state of Texas legalized hemp last year, causing a lot of confusion because marijuana and hemp can be hard to tell apart. The Texas Tribune reports that the resolution passed today directs Austin police not to spend city resources on lab testing that would distinguish between the two substances. Women given aspirin during their pregnancies are more likely to deliver full term babies. That's according to a new study. Researchers also found that low dose aspirin also helped cut down on the number of stillbirths and newborn deaths. Doctors are optimistic this study could help the health of moms and babies, especially in populations prone to premature births because aspirin is cheap and widely available. They are iconic and larger than life. The world's largest cowboy boots just celebrated their 40th anniversary at North Star Mall. In this week's Throwback Thursday, RJ Marquez tells us about the boots' interesting journey to San Antonio and the artist behind one of the most recognizable symbols in the entire state. You know, I think it's one of the unofficial symbols of San Antonio. Weighing 10,000 pounds and standing 35 feet 3 inches tall, the world's largest cowboy boot sculpture has been a part of the San Antonio landscape for four decades. In 1979, the Washington Project for the Arts commissioned Austin-born artist Bobby Daddy O. Wade to create a Texas-themed sculpture in Washington, D.C. But they became so popular, there was a battle to get them to the Lone Star State. The company that owned North Star Mall actually ended up in a bidding war between a couple other properties in Texas because everybody wanted a, you know, these boots at their location. So we won 
and we were able to purchase them for $20,000. Getting them to San Antonio was a tall task. Drivers had to take back roads all the way here. On January the 16th, uh, about 40 years ago, they came to rest here and they've been here ever since. The boots have become near and dear to the hearts of San Antonians and visitors from across the country. They're in the Guinness Book of World Records and a popular spot to take a picture. They have been used in commercials and national events to highlight the city. The only thing that can match the size of the boots? The larger than life personality of the artist. Bob Wade's influence and art can be seen throughout the entire state and country, but he always had a special connection to the world's largest boots right here in San Antonio. In fact, he told several people that they were his favorite piece of work. One of the things that he said about the boots is, I think that they would hold three, uh, 300,000 gallons of beer. We haven't tried it, and I don't know if Bob drank that much beer, but that kind of sums up who Bob is. Wade recently passed away, but his legacy lives on with his sculptures and his love for all things Texas. I think in Bob's heart, he's a Texan. He was born in Austin. He lived in San Antonio for a while. I think that um, the boots represent Texas. Gotta love those boots. Throwback Thursday is just one of the series we feature here on the News at 9. Here's a look at our lineup of some of the others. We'll be taking a look back at the biggest local stories tomorrow in our segment, The Week in 210. Let's find out what is trending tonight on KSAT.com with Ferris Sabawi. Myra, it's been a super busy day here at yeah. KSAT.com. As you know, a ton of news going on, but we still have time to get into some of the fun stuff, and that's <laughs> that's what we do here. All I right, love it. let's find out what's what's up. So uh, first off here, we're going to start local, and um, it's actually a really good story. A lot of people have been sharing this online about a, a local girl who got a full ride scholarship to MIT. That is awesome. That is, it's incredible. It's it's such a such a prestigious school, uh, yes. not an easy one. Uh, her name is Maria Garcia Garcia, uh, and she is a really clever kid. Uh, she got into coding at a very young age. Ah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, our Alicia Brera talked to her for the story. Um, she was one of about more than 100,000 kids that applied for this specific type of scholarship, wow. and she was one of 1,000 in the country to win it. That's amazing. It's, Full ride to MIT. It's really incredible to see what today's youth can do. I'm just trying to get enough sleep on the weekends, <laughs> and even that's that's pretty hard. Yeah, I'm failing in that department yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, congratulations to her. Uh, the full story is up on KSAT.com, a really good one, a heartwarming one. And yeah. she's the first in her family to go to college. Oh, wow. So uh, just a that really fun story. That makes this story. even more exciting for her. It's it's really great, uh, and it's great for her family. So, you know, definitely we wish her the best. That's, oh, that's, that's incredible. Yes, big congrats. Uh, Myra, I know a lot of people who uh, really miss college football already and are waiting for it to come back. Um, but yep. the good news is that some college football fans in Texas actually got some good news. They are going to have to wait for it a little bit, but the Texas Longhorns and the Texas State University Bobcats will be playing against each other for the first time since 1930. Since 1930? Yeah. Uh, wow. So this is still six years out, though. This game is planned for 2026, <laughs> so there's still a little bit more waiting Mark to be done. Yeah. Um, Texas State will be playing uh, at, at Darrell K. Royal Stadium uh, at UT, so that'll be their first time ever playing there. Okay. Um, and yeah, so it's a, a 96 year event in the making. So wow. really incredible. It's exciting, but yeah. you know, it's gonna take some time. Yeah, I think the Longhorns will take it probably, but I, I, I know that we work with a lot of Texas State alum who probably would you take it. You know, a lot can happen in six years. That's true, that's true. Yes. The talent can, can changed dramatically we'll have to see and the last story of the day everyone's talking about this mr peanut has died according to what, okay, the what uh, is, peanut company wh wh why what's happening with this <laughs> mr peanut sacrificed himself to save actors wesley snipe and matt walsh uh they were okay. all in the that, peanut mobile together and it veered off the highway oh. it's very okay. sad uh, he hung um, on. They I still have a big why question. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny, um, but Planter said this is all part of an upcoming Super Bowl ad that ah, they're planning. Okay. Um, That's so, what was missing for me. Got yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. So it was a really sad thing. A lot of brands on Twitter have been, uh, sh you know, shouting out Mr. Peanut, giving him some love, Snickers. Kool-Aid Mr. Clean yeah, himself. I saw the um, the bee from Honey Nut Cheerios yeah, yeah, was so extending his condolences. It's just good to see our sentient mass manufactured brands come together. 
in a time it's of literally need. exactly what I was thinking. It's just it's so heartwarming, <laughs> isn't it? I can't wait to see what happens with Mr. Peanut at the Super Bowl. I'm hoping he comes back to life in some uh, crazy scheme. So until then, we wait in suspense. We'll have to wait and see. It's yeah. gonna be good. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ferris. We'll be right back. Alicia Barrera, and these are your weekend picks. Here's a great way to introduce your kids to classical music. The San Antonio Symphony has teamed up with a library system to host Symphony at San Antonio Public Library. At these many performances, musicians are able to show off their instruments as well as answer questions from young fans. This week's performance is at Las Palmas Branch from 2 to 3 on Saturday. Squidward, Patrick, Gary, and all of your favorite characters from SpongeBob are coming to San Antonio as the national tour of the SpongeBob musical holds performances at the Majestic Theater. The award-winning musical has a score written by some of the music's biggest artists, including Sarah Bareilles, Cindy Lauper, John Legend, Lady Annabellum, and Panic at the Disco. Performances are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and ticket starts at $45. It's time to rodeo. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Barbecue Cook-Off features some of the world's most competitive barbecue teams. It also has family activities, live music, a kids cook-off, and much more. This event is one of several events kicking off the rodeo seasons and proceeds benefit the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Scholarship Fund. The event starts on Friday and continues all day Saturday. Tickets are $15 for a one-day pass and $25 for a weekend pass. For more on these events and everything happening around town this weekend, you can head over to KSAT.com. For The Nine, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. That's all our time tonight. Thanks for watching KSAT News at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. Have a good night.